Okay. Hello everyone. Um, again, there's a writer's strike going on, so I'm not editing these, and I'm doing them all off the cuff. Now, um, as as if you zoom in onto my books, you might be able to see that I have two books of Eartha Kits, and I've read two more of them. Uh, so I want to talk today about one of my favourite people, not just actors. I love Eartha Kitt and I don't think she got a fair shake but I want to celebrate her first because like Cher, each decade she did something to keep herself in the public eye. So whether it be, so in the 50s you've got Santa Baby, you've got all the hits so you know she's kind of the world music star and Broadway. She had she had two major Broadways and she had some you know some films. Put a pin in that, we're gonna talk about that. Um, obviously in the 60s you have you know Catwoman and the infamous uh, speech where she spoke to um, Lady Bird Johnson about the Vietnam War and got blacklisted for 10 years. In the 70s she came back and with Timbuktu, she's back on Broadway, back in the good graces. Obviously all through the, this, she was a worldwide star, so she traveled around the world, even though America had blacklisted her. Now, in the 80s, she had a, a bunch of dance hits, you know, Where Is My Man? And then the 90s, it was all about being a guest star, so like whether it's like cameos in feature films or guest stars in like The Nanny or like, you know, feature film like a boomerang. Like it was all about the guest stars, like, you know, being a legend. And then in the 2000s, we've got um, The Emperor's New Groove, where a whole new generation of people discovered her. And so she did the film and then she did the, the TV series. Um, and then obviously she's written books throughout this, like she wrote four books, four books. Um, you know, you know, she she basically mapped her career off um, a lady called um, Catherine Dunham who has the Catherine Dunham technique. Um, so, you know, when I mean, Eartha's, Eartha's story is a really interesting story. Like, basically, it's a Cinderella story, but you know, just imagine, you know, she's virtually the turn of the century you know, she's born to someone who's either a servant or homeless and who gives her up in order to marry someone else and puts her in with this pseudo family who have no electricity the only way she can earn money is by cotton picking and they they really mistreat her like it's very much a cinderella story and then Luckily, someone figures out you know, she can sing. So she sings in the Baptist church, the local Baptist church. And who, who's watching but her own mother looking after another man's children. And then her own mother gets murdered. Poss well, possibly, I mean, this is over 100 years ago, but possibly murdered by this new family. Like, the ridiculous. The rejection Eartha experienced when she was a young girl. I mean, sorry. I mean, my goodness. I'm, I'm trying to do this really quick, but my, anyway, my goodness, Eartha. You know, I mean, she always said that. You know, she was. She had a lot of manure thrown on her. She used that manure to to grow, and not let it get her down. Like, I mean. She's so inspirational. Like, I, 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 my goodness, I love Eartha. That's why I've been working on a project about Eartha. But who knows what will happen, but this is going to happen. I'm going to talk about Eartha. Now, anyway, so she gets plucked out from uh, North South Carolina and goes to New York City where she gets to see electricity for the first time. And then, you know, she, she, she goes to school and she learns how to read and write and you know, obviously all of these times there's a teacher or someone who recognizes that she has talent and then she gets to go to like a performing arts high school and then she goes to the, um, the Catherine Dunham 
company on a scholarship and then eventually becomes part of the company, travels around the world and then in um, she gets an offer she can't refuse in France and becomes a cabaret star and meets um, Orson Welles who calls her the most exciting woman in the world. Okay, it's five minutes, I could talk to... I mean, obviously there's a one-woman sort of show inside of me because I've been trying to write it, so I could talk about this for hours. She's amazing. I love, I love, love, love Eartha Kitt. Um, so obviously there's two big things that really held her back. Um, I, I don't want to talk about her childhood because, like, obviously, what, you know, may, maybe if... I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to focus on that. What I want to focus on are things where... So, like, The Hayes Code, where you had things like where some of her films couldn't be released in the South. So, where a lot of African-American people live and could have supported them and become big hits. So, like... Um, there's a wonderful film that she made with Sammy Davis Jr. before he was, you know, as big as her. And the, the absolute, um, uh, anyway, I'll put the title there, um, Anna Lu Lucia, Anna, Anna something. Watch a clip of it. The chemistry between those two is palpable. Oh my goodness, they've got great chemistry. I would have liked to have seen those two together in something else. So, um, and she also made St. Louis Blues, which should have been a big hit, but you know, it, you know, it just it couldn't. It's like like a you know a, a one-legged, one-armed man trying to run a marathon. Like you need the North and the South together. Okay, so um, so I just want to say, what if these films could have been big smashes like they deserve to be? Um, I, I would like to have seen them in a film like White Christmas. Um, so like where you have, like if you look at something like Carmen Giles, right? Where you've got um, Harry Belafonte and... Dorothy Dandridge, then you'd have Sammy Davis Jr. and Eartha um, Kitt. Can you imagine all of that talent in one movie? A musical, dancing, with their own voices. Mm, I want to watch that movie. Why can't I live on that timeline? So, okay, now another thing, if those films in the 50s were hits, I think she would have done animation much, much sooner. She, sh it, it just, why did it take so long for her to do animation? I don't know. And the, the animation I would choose for her to do is 101 Dalmatians as Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. So, okay. If I can get someone, I'm going to pop in a clip of someone as Eartha, as Cruella de Vil in a scene from 101 Donations. If not, okay. What did you think? Could it have been a big smash? I think it could have been great for Eartha. All right, so fast forward and um, let's go to the blacklisting. So what if you know what, what what if um, Lady Bird and Lyndon Johnston didn't didn't blacklist her? Um, the thing that I think she would have done in the seventies is basically like sure, like where are the variety shows? She was on, you know, she she was often like, she was a creature of television. Like she often did other people's variety shows. She often had little clips and other people's like, where's her Christmas special? You know, I, I know Paul Lind, you know, he was, he, he, I mean, he was also, he came up with Eartha Kitt, funnily enough, and he, he was often a bit too much. Um, Eartha may have been the same, but I mean, she often did one-woman shows. 
as her cabaret act. So to me, the variety show would have been her natural, natural place in the world in the 70s. I would have loved to have seen her. I mean, obviously it would have been great to have her on Star Trek, but anyway, um, I would have liked to have seen a Christmas show, I would have liked to have seen a variety show, you know, the Earth Kids show. And, um, you know, with, with that, I, I think she would have done a lot more films in the 80s, so you know, maybe, you know, she did, she did tour as the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, maybe a role in Return to Oz, wouldn't that have been interesting? You know, like Disney's dark period, right? That could have been really an interesting period for her. Um, you know, like kids' films, like um, Never Ending Story. You know, start. I think she could have been fantastic in all those films, um, in all those you know, films or TV shows. So, look, even though her kid had a career that everyone, anyone would envy, I think she could have done more. So, what do you think? What if Eartha Kitt had had a fairer shake in life? What, what would you have liked Eartha to have done? Sound off in the comments below. Thank you so much. And if Eartha's daughter ever watches this, I love you, Mother. And thank you for your wonderful book.